Tonight, security chiefs reinvigorate securing the nation. We are going to make sure we follow up to the courts to recover the money. Northern Governors Forum reacts to suspension of rural grazing areas program as High Court dismisses Mieti Allah suit and open grazing. Presidential election tribunal begins evidence gathering from parties. I can assure you that we are on top of it. It will not damage any properties again because we have localized it. Plus, combined emergency teams put out Ijegun pipeline fire. Two killed and many injured. Good evening. Welcome to NT Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Also reading tonight from Kaduna is Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachukun. The narrative concerning the nation's security issues is fast changing with the number of successes lately recorded across the country. With this, security chiefs are calling on Nigerians to maintain the tempo by giving useful information promptly to agencies involved in maintaining law and order. This was at a meeting of the nation's security chiefs presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari. Air Marshal Sadiq Abu Bakr, Chief of the Air Staff, told State House correspondent Jidi Unifadi that the current strategy being adopted is effective and would continue to be operated. And the message that is coming out of that meeting is that the armed forces of Nigeria and other security agencies will continue to work much harder to ensure that every Nigerian is secure and the territorial integrity of Nigeria is not undermined by anybody. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has dismissed the suit filed by the Mieti Allah Social Cultural Organization challenging the validity of the Ranching and Open Grazing Prohibition Law 2017 promulgated by the Benue State Government. The presiding judge, Justice Okun Abang, gave the verdict this Thursday. Olabodi Arewa reports. The organization approached the court in 2017 praying that it invalidates the law for being inconsistent with the fundamental rights of its members to freedom of movement under the 99 constitution as amended. The court on the 20th of December 2017 directed Mietiala to file amended originating summons within five days. Their failure to comply with the order for more than 19 months prompted the defendants to pray the court to dismiss the suit for lack of diligent prosecution. Justice Okonabang, in dismissing the suit, noted that despite several reminders by the courts, the plaintiffs failed to comply and gave no cogent reason for doing so. The suit was struck out with 100,000 dollars cost to be paid to each of the 14 defendants in the case. Efforts to speak with counsel to Mietiala failed. Anybody that wants to rear cattle in Benue State will follow the good law pass to ensure that branching the best practices all over the world is maintained in the state. We are going to make sure we follow up to the court to recover the money which they awarded in our favor. Officers of the Benue State Government, the Inspector General of Police, and the movement against Fulani occupation are defendants in the suites in Abuja Labo Darewa, NTA News. In the meantime, the Northern Governors Forum has made clarifications on the federal government's suspension of Ruga Initiative. In a statement signed by its chairman, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State, the forum described the varied reactions to the Ruga Settlement Initiative as part of the beauty of a democratic process. The forum urges all int interest groups, especially from the northern part of the country, to remain calm and channel their views democratically while the federal government handles the matter in the best interest of all Nigerians. Your statement notes that the forum is engaging all interested parties after receiving the position of the leadership of the coalition of northern groups with a view to enlightening the public on the concept and wisdom behind the decision. The forum calls for calm while the federal government works on a comprehensive package with a multi-sectoral and multidimensional benefits that would serve the interest of all in the short and long term.
About 5,000 pieces of evidence have been tendered before the Presidential Election Tribunal as the court commenced the main hearing of the People's Democratic Party's petition against the election of President Muhammad Buhari. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewu reports. Following the ruling of the tribunal to commence the main trial after the All Progressives Congress requested for more time to study the list of evidence to be tendered, the petitioner, al Haji Atiku Abubakar, began the tendering of evidence. These are mainly forms EC8A, B, and C. Form EC8A are the results of polling booths, while Form EC8B are results from the ward levels and EC8C are the results from the local government levels. While the respondents, INEC, APC, and President Muhammad Buhari all objected to the admissibility of the evidence, reasons for their objection are to be stated in their main address to the court. Meanwhile, a foremost Nigerian constitutional lawyer, Professor Ben Nwabweze, senior advocate of Nigeria, has called on the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal to help Nigerians regain confidence in the nation's electoral process by doing a thorough job of the election petition. He stated this while addressing the court at the beginning of the day's hearing. The hearing continues with more evidence to be tendered. In Abuja, Femi Okeowu, NT News. There's more news from the judiciary. Now, the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has dismissed an application by the governor of Akwaibom State, Emmanuel Udom, seeking indefinite adjournment of the money laundering charge brought against him and the president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Paul Usoro. Vera Chumba reports that Justice Rilwan Aikawa had ordered the immediate trial of the defendants in the suit. The Nigerian Bar Association President Paul Osano is facing allegation of money laundering to the tune of 1.4 billion naira alongside Akwaibom State Governor Emmanuel Odom and others. Governor Odom has asked the court to adjourn the case in a die that is indefinitely so as to allow the Lagos Division of the Court of Appeal determine the appeal he filed against the ruling of the court. He is challenging the jurisdiction of the court to entertain the charge against Osoro on the ground that his name was mentioned as one of the persons who allegedly conspired with Osoro to launder the 1.4 billion naira. He argued that by mentioning his name as a sitting governor, the charge has become invalid as he is immune from criminal prosecution as a governor. EFCC counsel argued that adjourning the trial indefinitely will amount to stay of proceedings under Section 306 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. Justice Aikawa dismissed the application and ordered trial of the defendants. Meanwhile, a witness, Odom Ndogeset, had told the court how she facilitated the payment of 700 million naira into Paul Osoro's account in Lagos. Viera Chumuba, NTA News. And pending political cases before the Federal High Court will be concluded before the end of October 2019 to afford all candidates the opportunity to pursue their political ambitions. Chief Judge of the Federal High Court of Nigeria, Justice Adamu Abdul Kafarati, made this known when he gave audience to the members of the International Human Rights and Anti-Corruption Society in Abuja. Omenka Amarachuku reports. <laughs> This warm handshake set the tune for the discussion between the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court and the Director General of International Human Rights and Anti-Corruption Society. This group is committed in building transparent institutions, protecting human rights, ensuring the sustainable capital development. I am proud to share the honor of this day with the National Judicial Council for Civil uh, Legal Rights. All these global commitments inspire international human rights' long-term mission to build and strengthen national capacities and institutions which drive the development progress, empowerment of civil society, and expand people's opportunities to participate in decision-making processes, particularly for those who are traditionally excluded, including women and young men, and poor communities. You also agree with me that during his leadership, there is no cases of corruption of judges under his watch. So my advice to the judges is that 
Please, my dogs, don't just be involved in judicial corruption. The group is also promising to collaborate with the judiciary for the development of the judicial system in Nigeria. In Abuja, Omeka Marachuku, NTA News. And from the legislature now, the Senate has called for increased budgetary allocation to primary health care in Nigeria and the introduction of modern technologies in the treatment of patients. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unquo reports. Senate reconvened into a closed door session. One hour later, the executive session ends and business of the day commenced with primary health care system in focus. On the workings of the Senate. A motion from Senator Luremi Tinibu and 105 others highlighted the disturbing state of primary health care facilities in Nigeria. Senators argued that the poor funding of primary health care in Nigeria is responsible for the vast stretching of the secondary and tertiary health care institutions. Direct the Ministry of Employment to put in place policies to ensure that every employer of labor has health insurance package for employees. The federal government will release money through the budgetary provision and that money will not be used for the primary purpose of equipping and maintaining the primary health care centers. Former governors in the Senate who were once in charge of these health facilities proffer solutions. In the, the National Financial Intelligence Unit has made an observation that local government funds have been hijacked by the state governors. Unless we continue to create an avenue for it to be continually maintained, of course the whole thing will collapse again. It should not be made to just be affordable, and it should also be made free. This is something that we need to oversight very well. We must ensure that everything is streamlined. Consideration of health matters continued on the floor as Senator Ibrahim Oloriebe drew the attention of the Senate to the urgent need to strengthen the National Health Insurance Scheme and for NHIS to direct HMOs to pay health providers outstanding debts within three months. The enrollees complain of being frequently told to purchase drugs outside of the hospital under the guise of either the drug being out of stock or not covered under the scheme. Senator Emmanuel Oke Jeff drew the attention of the Senate to the recent tank explosion in Benue State and the need to curb these accidents in Nigeria. Fire killing over 50 people and over 100 others secured various degrees of burns and injuries. Educate our people that whenever they see fuel products, be it HGO, petrol, or even gases, that they should stay away. Senate observed the minute silence in honor of two former senators from Bauchi State who died recently. Senators Ibrahim Lame, Garba Gamawa, and those who lost their lives in the Benue tanker explosion. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, granted audience to the Lebanese ambassador to Nigeria, Hossam Diab, and his United Arab Emirates counterpart, Ambassador Fahad El Tafak, during which they agreed to strengthen their parliamentary relations. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. And from the House of Representatives, the Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila has announced names of new House Majority Leaders for the 9th Assembly, as contained in a communication from the APC House Caucus. National Assembly Correspondent Lami Ali reports. The announcement of the names of Majority Leaders was greeted with applause from House members. Members of the House of Representatives, APC Caucus hereby endorse the following honorable members as principal Ado Dogua House Leader <laughs> Mohammed Tahir Mangunu Chief Whip <laughs> Honorable Nkuruka Oyejocha the Deputy Chief Whip And Honorable Peter Apatasin, Deputy Leader. By this development, principal officers of the House of Representatives, consistent majority and minority leaders, have been fully constituted as required. I am now receiving what I've been what I've been eyeing through the front door and in my right hand through the leverage 
and the intervention of my great party, the APC. Following Wednesday's breach of House rules during plenary, the House has set up an ad hoc committee to carry out an investigation. Thursday's plenary featured the adoption of two motions and the need for relevant government agencies to assess victims of recent flood disaster in Lagos and Katsina states. Over 10,000 houses across the three local government areas of my constituency cannot be put to use by the owners due to this uh, flooding. House members also called on authorities to look into emoluments of judges with a view to eliminate corrupt practices in the judiciary. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. Time for a first break now. More reports ahead shortly. Stay with us. Enjoy the best of African football as NTA, Africa's largest television network and hotspots, Nigeria's foremost sports production and marketing company, bring you all 52 matches of the Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019 live from June 21 to July 19, 2019. Yes, all 52 games will hit your screens in crystal clear digital quality. It's your guarantee of a memorable viewing experience and a wonderful cost-effective opportunity for corporate Nigeria to reach tens of millions of Nigerians. For sponsorship and commercial support, contact Abubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. Hot Sports, masters of the game. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Dear mommy, you went out that night with the baby in your tummy, but you did not come back. The baby is very fat and she eats and sleeps a lot. Everyone says that you are in a better place, but I miss you so much. I keep asking them, where is the better place? But nobody answers me. Auntie Kemi just hugs me and says, go and play. Mommy, I miss you. Please, when are you coming home? I still will miss you, Mom. And in honor of your memory, I'm a doctor today working with the MTN Foundation to save mothers and children every day. Ending mother and child mortality in Nigeria is dear to us. We will keep strengthening this most important bond just for you. Our country is filled with people with different skills. And like the game football, we all have a position to play. The midfielders are the ones who bring us together. They help us unleash our potential. To win, we must come together as one team. We must play as Nigeria United. Don't worry, Abba. It's not your chicken. It's the Sadap Supreme Chicken Essence that gives it the supreme chicken taste. Be supreme, Nigeria. Hey, now me I go ask and say, why all of us go pay hundred hundred thousand naira? Say, cause say your husband he want do seventieth birthday. She now all of us marry him together. Hey, when her mama die, she collects money. Her papa die, she collects money. Her mama mama die, she collects. You remember when she talks, say she wanted her mama mama dead body. Mama, you too talk. Now you be glad when they dash me credit anyhow. Imagine, <laughs> forty year old dead body. Why you they laugh now? <laughs> Now, try to bring your money. Mama, no laugh. Not be you, Jerry. Now, some uh, apropos uh, customer, they, uh, wait, they know they mind their own business. Whoa. I never even begin to give you her gist. Glow and member get five times your recharge to call all networks. Recharge with star, triple five, star, pin, hash. Make her sell my market finish first, eh? I will call you back. Oh? 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 Glow Unlimited. I was born and bred in Africa. I schooled in Africa, and I have seen firsthand the level of poverty in Africa. This is the reason why our family in 2010 
created the Tony Elmelu Foundation to help young African men and women to realize their life aspirations. To the young Africans, I say, the future of Africa is indeed in your hands. I look forward to welcoming our entrepreneurs in Abuja between the 26th and 27th of July this year for the annual Tony A. Melo Foundation Entrepreneurship Forum, the largest gathering of African entrepreneurs. This is to inform you that the South South Monarchs Security Summit earlier scheduled to take place on the 9th of July 2019 in Uyo Akwaibom State has been put on hold. A new date will be announced in due course. We regret any inconvenience this may cause our invited guests. His Royal Majesty, King Dr. Edmund Dakoru, the Amayanabo of Nambe Kingdom, Chairman, South South Monarchs Forum, announcer. The National Council for Art and Culture wishes to inform stakeholders in the art and culture sector that the 49th edition of the National Technical Committee meeting on the National Festival of Art and Culture, NAFES, is scheduled to hold as follows. Venue, Heritage Hotel, Bini City, Edo State, date 8th to 12th of July 2019, time 10 a.m. Delhi. All commissioners of culture in the 36 states and all directors of culture Art Councils and History Bureau in the 36 states and the FCT are expected at the meeting. Announcer, Otumba Olushogun Rushawi, Director General, National Council for Art and Culture. Thanks for staying with us. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju is back in the country from Rwanda, where he represented President Muhammadu Buhari at the 25th anniversary of the liberation of Rwanda. Vice President Oshibaju joined other African leaders and heads of state at the occasion, which took place today in Kigali. The event was held to reflect on the end of the genocide in 1994. The Vice President was accompanied on the trip by senior government officials. The first African Union coordination meeting with regional economic communities is underway in Niamey, Niger Republic, as more countries, including Nigeria, sign into the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which is expected to facilitate greater trade within the continent. Let's now join Foreign Desk Correspondent Makut Simon Macham, who is at the summit, for an update. Now, essentially, this is the first mid-year coordination meeting between the African Union and regional economic communities. It is also the 12th extraordinary summit of the African continental free trade area. Now, this meeting uh, wants to ensure that all the details about the operations of the African continental free trade uh, agreement are fine-tuned as more countries sign in. As you may be aware, President Muhammadu Buhari will be signing on behalf of Nigeria, having ensured that all the reservations and all the issues that were raised by various bodies in Nigeria were carefully considered and indeed addressed. So President Muhammadu Buhari will be joining his counterparts here in Niamey, in Niger Republic, to sign this document, which is the first stage for Nigeria, and indeed other stages will follow. Now, before the heads of states will meet, the Council of Ministers, which is the Executive Council of the African Union, is meeting, and Nigeria is represented here by the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mustafa Suleiman, who is leading the delegation for now, and of course, Nigeria's permanent representatives to the African Union in Addis Ababa are all here to ensure that Nigeria's uh, presentation to these meetings are fine-tuned. Uh, for now, these are some of the information we have for you. We'll keep you in touch as soon as we get more details. From Niamey in Niger Republic, I am Maku Simon Macham, NT News. All right, and back home here, President Muhammad Buhari has given assent to nine bills passed by the 8th National Assembly and declined assent to 17 others transmitted to his office. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports that President Buhari's aides on National Assembly matters briefed newsmen on the economic prospects of the bills assented to. Uh, ...has been withheld. 
The bills assented to by President Muhammad Buhari include Nigeria Natural Medicine Development Agency Bill, Suppression of Piracy and Other Maritime Defenses Bill, Institute of Transport Administration of Nigeria Bill, the National Institute of Construction Technology and Management Bill. His Excellency Mr. President has also assented to the Nigeria Police Trust Fund Establishment Act. This is intended to improve security bring up the police to the status where other security agencies are in the country through appropriate funding, training of the personnel, provision of uh, facilities and infrastructure, and above all, psyching up the police. Others are the National Agricultural Seed Council Bill, Agricultural Credit Guarantee Skin Fund Bill, Federal Capital Territory Hospital Management Board Bill, and the FCT Primary Health Care Board Bill. This is intended, of course, to develop and promote and indeed make efficient the structure of health care delivery in the Federal Capital Territory. The presidential aides also expressed the confidence that President Muhammad Buhari will consider assent to order 17 rejected bills in line with legislative due process. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. The media coverage given to the 2019 general elections was a clear demonstration of patriotism. Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, stated this at a stakeholders' meeting with the media in reviewing the conduct of the 2019 general elections in Abuja, Mir Ugidi reports. Pleasant trees are never in short supply in gatherings like this because the Fort Estate is quite a busy one. So, all is done in areas. Being gatekeepers, these media chiefs avert wars, calm rising tensions, set agenda for the government, all in the interest of the nation. The 2019 elections were even more tasking in the delivery of these national assignments, where perception and truth competing for supremacy with the penetration of the social media. 2,131 domestic and foreign journalists from 202 media outfits were on the field, and their experiences will enrich the idea bank of the INEC. Uh, the media. Uh did not disappoint before, during, and after the election. We were never at any point in time found wanting. The live coverage on television, radio, online newspapers, and live streaming on other platforms, free of charge, gratis. The commission didn't pay for this. Such kindness and patriotism from the Fort Power rekindles the spirit of comradeship in the INEC chairman. I want to assure you, Larry, that that spirit of making our country work for all Nigerians is still in us, and it will remain in me forever. Two months from now, all the contributions from the stakeholders will be in a compendium for a better outing in 2023. Mie Ogidi, NT News. And staying with electoral matters, INEC says it will take a critical look at some issues that will engender better democratic practices towards a more credible pathway to elections and the electoral process. This followed the presentation of the post-2019 general elections review roundtable by the Center for Transparency Advocacy, an accredited local election observer group. Timothy Yusuf reports. The 2019 general elections have come and gone. Stakeholders have, however, continued to review, appraise the outcomes, mistakes made, the successes, lessons learned, and of course, rejig the process for the forthcoming Kogi and Bayelsa State's governorship elections, and ultimately the 2023 general elections, which is about 1,200 days away. Executive Director of the Centre for Transparency Advocacy, Faith Wadichi, championed this gathering of stakeholders with the presentation of the 2019 general elections final report. The report centers on 13 key recommendations commending INEC for the conduct of a credible exercise. We feel that the political class being the overall beneficiaries of an electoral process, they should actually be the ones in the forefront of making our elections better. The recommendations made are essentially to make amends for areas of concern by the stakeholders gathered under this roof. 
INEC on its part has promised readiness to make amends, especially as the Commission deliberates on continuous voter registration, whether or not to deregister non-performing political parties and the need for improved internal democracy within political parties. We are open in relation to all these engagements and all the recommendations that have been made so far. The November 16 governorship elections in Kogi and Bayelsa states, as well as other off-season elections are expected to witness more improvement before the 2023 general elections. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. If Nigeria is to get it right in bringing to an end the menace of hate speech, fake news and cyber crimes, all hands must be on deck. Now, this is the view of stakeholders during a one desensitization seminar organized by the National Orientation Agency in collaboration with the Nigerian Television Authority. This is Peter Afunanya, the spokesperson of the Department of State Security Service, DSS, working to join other participants at a one-day seminar organized by the National Orientation Agency in collaboration with NTE to find ways of curbing the menace of fake news, hate speech, and cyber crimes in the country. Issues that have not only created disharmony among the citizens, but also poses threat to national security. Renowned political scientist Professor Kabiru Macho, Director General of NTA who was represented, and the Director General of NOAA were all of the view that a value reorientation, attitudinal change and legislations are needed for Nigeria to tackle hate speech, fake news and cyber crime. Hate speech, fake news, and cyber crimes, in my view, have constituted very serious issues of gargantuan problems. Unguided utterances by some community, traditional, religious, and political leaders have both been prov provocative and inciting, in many instances leading to acrimony and enmity. That we in the NOA have found the partnership with it. A very rewarding. It was unanimously agreed that everyone has a role to play and that action should begin immediately. In Abuja, Yusuf Omar, NTA News. The federal government is developing a template for tracking the implementation of policies, programs and projects approved by the federal and state governments. Secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, in a message to the Southwest Regional Meeting of Secretaries to State Governments and Permanent Secretaries of the Cabinet Affairs Offices, explained that this approach will enrich policy and decision-making process, which will translate into efficient service delivery. Michael Olale reports. This convergence of secretaries to the state governments, permanent secretaries and coordinators of the Cabinet Affairs Offices at both federal and state levels are exploring strategies for articulating and coordinating developmental policies. This is one of the initiatives of the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation to strengthen Cabinet Affairs Offices nationwide and discharging its responsibility of coordinating policy strategy. It is therefore our duty to ensure that we take full advantage of this opportunity to advance good policy options for the good people of our nation. The agenda of this meeting is not only to adopt workable framework for policy formulation, but translate such into developmental programs. In addition, a performance management tool developed with the support of TFI DPEP will soon be implemented in the civil service. State governments and international partners are optimistic that with the clear understanding of the principle of community of practice, budgetary constraint associated with project financing will be eliminated. This responsibility is at the very core of governance and the yardstick with which the effectiveness of government programs and policies are measured. The meeting is aimed at creating platform for delivering good governance. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. President Mohamed Buhari has approved the constitution of the African Peer Review Mechanism Governing Council. Malam Abba Ali is the chairman of the Governing Council, while Princess Gloria Akobundu will serve as secretary. A statement by Ulusha Gwadikuli, Permanent Secretary General Services, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Further says that 13 other members are appointed 
for the Council. More than 21 million customers across the country are expected to benefit from Ngote Cement Bag of Goodies consumer promo. Amaka Wu reports that consumers stand a chance of winning a wide range of prizes. The promo was formally launched in Lagos. Management of Dangote Cement disclosed that to participate in the Dangote Bag of Goodies Consumer Promo, customers are to purchase a minimum of one bag of any Dangote Cement products, which are Triple X, Falcon, and Blockmaster, to qualify, as each bag contains a branded scratch card for customers to scratch, and whatever the card reveals is what the customer wins. What is very important is that the backbone of of his sales, it's the customer, it's the consumer. And it's also for them to understand don't go to cement. The bags of goodies is already in the market. So consumers are already assessing it and the promo is effective from today. Every scratch card found inside the bag, consumers are expected to scratch it and go to the next redemption center to redeem. We will have a toll free line where consumers can lay complaints for tampered bag and for any complaint at all around the promo. Prizes to be won include 43 saloon cars, other star prize, 550 refrigerators, 200 million Naira cash reward, 24 tricycles, 24 motorbikes, 300,000 goodie parks are among other things to be won at over 200 designated redemption centers across the country. Star prizes will be redeemed within a maximum of seven days. The promo, which runs from the 1st of July to September the 30th, 2019, is targeted at all Dangote customers for the reward of their loyalty and patronage over the years. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, is set to introduce the incorporated joint venture model to replace the joint venture exploration and production project. Group Managing Director of the NNPC, Dr. Mekan Tibaru, at the Nigeria Oil and Gas Conference disclosed that the move is part of efforts to surmount cash call challenges and put upstream sector on a path of sustainable growth. With the significance of it, it opens a whole vista of things for us uh, as the industry. Because we came in a time when there was much suspicion, depressed mood, uncomfortable behaviors, and almost anything goes. And money is about the most difficult thing to uh, go in between you and your partners. The NNPC boss said contrary to the ugly trend of fuel importation, the corporation has developed serious strategies to produce gas in sufficient quantity for both local and export markets. Mekan Tiburu further emphasized that the NNPC was paying more attention to gas development due to its potential to serve the energy needs of Nigerians and revive moribund factories in the country. A combined team of emergency responders has finally put out the raging fire at Ijegu, Lagos. Meanwhile, the list of people currently receiving treatment in two hospitals has been released. Paul Omukago reports. The fire was eventually put out by officials of Lagos State Fire Service and other agencies at 4.40 p.m. after about 12 hours of intensive firefighting. The victims with varying degree of burns are currently receiving treatment at Lagos State University Teaching Hospital and Bagada General Hospital. Some children who were also affected are among those receiving treatment. We rescued 12 people. Four were taken to lawsuits. I've got in touch with the CMD of lawsuit and he assured me that they are receiving adequate treatment. Also, eight were evacuated to bonds unit at Bagada. However, I sympathize with the families that lost their beloved one in, in here. We recovered 
two bodies. And those two bodies were deposited at um, Yaba uh, Mortuary. In the list of victims released, some members of the same family were affected. These probably could be those in some affected buses in the vicinity. The fire started at about 2 a.m. as a result of pipeline vendors siphoning fuel into tankers. In Lagos, Polo Mukago, NTN News. And more news coming ahead, but let's bring you some messages. He doesn't want overripe things. Ah, do do by nature. Black is beautiful. Oh, talk to the and the baby is black. Ask her. <laughs> Uche, quickly send me the baby video. Okay, ma. Yeah, it's late. perfect family may be under threat by germs. Germs can cause infectious diseases like diarrhea, typhoid, and flu. These infectious diseases are amongst the biggest killers of adults and children. In Nigeria, tens of thousands of children under the age of five have died due to diarrhea caused by germs, which could easily have been prevented. These illness-causing germs are everywhere. Dirty surfaces, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes, in unclean bathing water. To protect your family from germs, use the power of Dettol's one capful. For surface cleaning, for first aid, for your laundry, in your bathing water, and to protect your family from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Be Dettol sure. One football confederation, 24 teams, six stadiums, four cities, 504 African stars, one trophy. The Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019, comes alive from June 21 with the showpiece final on July 19, 2019. Watch the 52 matches of the tournament live on Africa's biggest and largest television network, NTA, in partnership with Hot Sports. Be part of the biggest soccer fiesta in the African continent as the Super Eagles go on a bold mission to clinch the prestigious title for the fourth time to the excitement of millions of fans across the length and breadth of Nigeria. For inquiries, please contact Obubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. ANTA, you can't beat the rich. <laughs> The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Thanks for staying with us. The renewed recognition given to science, technology and innovation for national development by the federal government through set out policies 
has enabled the environment for agencies to deliver better on their mandate of research and developmental activities. Executive Vice Chairman, National Agency for Science, Engineering, Infrastructure, NASENI, Professor Mohamed Sani Haruna, affirmed this when he received an award of excellence from the NASENI branch of the Academic Staff Union of Research Institutions. Justin Bem Uni reports. This is the first of its kind for the Atsui Naseni family to publicly show appreciation to a rare and outstanding chief executive for being an uncommon labor-friendly head. This did not just come on a platter of gold, as the staff confirmed a series of incentives they have enjoyed in the course of their duty during his tenure. The award of excellence is also tied to how his leadership has introduced passion for research and development activities in the agency, as the nation can now feel its research interventions in agriculture, power, security, education, democracy, and credible election problem solutions. There are so many things we look at before we arrive at this award presentation. One, we look at our career progression. Before you assume leadership of Naseni, Naseni staffers were stagnated because the system then did not permit many people to become deputy directors. The award means so much to the Naseni boss, as it is coming from not just the staff, but a body of researchers who are determined to develop the nation through their work. That the award is not to MS Haruna, as a man, the award is for the Naseni family itself. The award is a symbol of hope, progress, and development for Nigeria. He has been described to have, over seven years now, demonstrated the passion for good working relationship between the union and the management of Naseni in Abuja, Justin Bem Uni, NTA News. Let's now take a couple of stories from our Kaduna Center with Suleiman. Suleiman. some media organizations and demand full enforcement of the uh, uh, but uh, moving on now recent reports by the united nations reveals that many youths in nigeria stand the risk of drug abuse however as more awareness on drugs and substance abuse continue to spread on all fronts the United States of America is providing assistance to Nigeria to tackle the unhealthy lifestyle, which is of global concern. Dui Dia reports. The reports by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime reveal that over 14 million Nigerians engage in drugs and substance abuse, most of them women and adolescents. Codeine cough syrup and tramadol are two of such drugs that tops the list, especially amongst young people. To clamp down on this, the United States of America Embassy in Nigeria is complementing the effort of the federal government to create better awareness and improve our capacity to avoid illicit drug use, as well as increase awareness and understanding of healthy life choices among Nigerians. Andrew Dodo is one of those once affected by drug abuse, but was lucky enough to come out of the Abbey 26 years ago. He narrated his experience. I also experienced loss of control. Today, Andrew has not just recovered from such an healthy lifestyle, he is also using the social interaction mechanism to help other people engaging in drugs and substance abuse. With all our hands put together, we are going to succeed. Three states in the northern Nigeria, namely Kano, Kaduna, Gombe, and the Federal Capital Territory, are partaking in the pilot edition of the Reclaiming Future in the northern Nigeria. The general story with drug addiction is I want to quit, but 
but I don't know how. It's a very long-term treatment plan. We did different kind of things that encourage students, and if there's any advice they want, they should come to our mentor. The NDLA has rehabilitation programs, and, and some of the other ministries have rehabilitation programs that are helpful. But it, it really needs the resources available to be able to do that. They're reclaiming the future in the Northern Nigeria project, which has 297 facilitators, is working with drug victims in schools, IDP camps, and motor parks within the four cities in Abuja, Doi, Dia, and T News. Let's take another break now. Stay with us. My name is Baba Kingibe. Chief Abiola was asked by Abacha, and he did give names of people who should join his government. The annulment, the intrigues, the maneuvers. I wasn't aware whether he gave my name, but his reaction to me clearly indicated that he didn't give my name. Given the background of general support by MK Abiola and the party to the Abacha coup, um, I did not see any reason why I shouldn't be involved. June 12, The Untold Story. Our country is filled with people with different skills. And like the game football, we all have a position to play. Some save the day. They put themselves on the line for the others. They are the goalkeepers. To win, we must come together as one team. We must play as Nigeria United. With heavy hearts, we announced the death of Honorable Haske Francis Hanania, which occurred on Tuesday, 25th June, 2019. The funeral arrangement is as follows. Friday, 5th July, corpse leaves National Hospital Abuja to Yola by air and then proceeds to own local government area for lying in state at General Hanania's residence. Time, 7 a.m. Saturday, 6th July, funeral service at LCCN, number one, Hong, and interment at Central Cemetery, Hong. Time, 10 a.m. Announcer, H.A. Hanania for the family. Sports now. Father O'Connell Science College, Mina, Niger State, and St. Jude's Girls Secondary School, Amarata Yenugua, Bielsa State, emerged champions of this year's Nestle Milo Basketball Championship held at the Indoor Sports Hall of the National Stadium, Lagos. Olumide Higuntara has details. The 21st edition of the Nestle Milo Basketball Championship reached the climax as defending champions St. Jude's Girls Secondary School, Amarata, Yenegoa, Baesa State, and Father O'Connell Science College, Mina, retained the titles won last year. It was an easy victory for the Yenegoa girls as the team had played their counterparts from Government Secondary School, Doko, Benue State, 22-15. This is the first time we're winning three times in a row, three times straight. Oh. The boys' category final that kept spectators on their feet, held bound by the antics of Father O'Connell Science College boys, turned out to be another Milo miracle. The match seemed to be lost and won by General Azan Usman Katsina Unity College that led throughout the four quarters of retention soaked encounter until the last minute when Father O'Connell resurrected from the abyss of defeat and smiled home with the star prize of the competition with a 67-62 scoreline victory. We were down with almost 20 points. So with the help of our teammates and our determination, we were able to take back the trophy. Dignitaries at the event, including representative of the chief executive, Nestle Nigerian PLC, comment. Well, this is just pretty much Nestle. It is in line with our Nestle continuous excellence, always getting better, doing it better every year. What we have done today is to give the best platform to the children to unleash their inner strengths. They have been so consistent in the sponsorship of this grassroots uh, development of basketball. Some teams may have won the game and some may have lost, but overall everybody is, 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 is a winner. Because at the end, it's Nigerian basketball that, that, that will benefit. Outstanding players and teams 
were also rewarded for their efforts. In Lagos, Ulun Jekutola, NT News. Well, congratulations to Father O'Connell Science College. This presenter is an alumnus of that college, so now you know. Still more on basketball, Nigeria targets victory at uh, 2019 FIBA Under-16 Afro Basket in Cape Verde. Tamara Ibiwe has details.